Currently working on a Volkswagen Golf. This is a TSI and it's got an intermittent cranking no start fault also cut out on the customer on the road. I'm going to try it now and see to replicate the fault. Okay, so as you can see there, it didn't start. And in this video, I'm gonna be taking you through the process of what I have found and possibly how to fix this fault. Okay, so first of all, a bit of information on this. It came on a tow truck, cut out on the customer. And when it got to the workshop, it actually started up okay. It was running for a while. I was monitoring the live data on the fuel side. It does have some fault codes, which I'll get to in a second. And after around 10 to 15 minutes of the vehicle running, it then cut out, started again straight away for a brief period, and then cut out again. Fault codes that were stored were P3073, fuel pump electrical circuit, um, so malfunction in circuit was the exact wording, P0087, fuel rail system pressure too low, and P025A, fuel pump module control circuit open. So with those fault codes, I brought up the live data, I had those live data PIDs running while the vehicle was actually idling and all fuel pressure and everything was fine. I did see the dropout in fuel pressure in the live data and I also seen the, the um, low fuel pressure when the cranking no start fault happened. So what I have done since is go straight for the fuel pump. We didn't waste any more time looking for anything else and let me show you what initially has been found so under the back seat on these we have fuel pump and we have a block connector here on the top and if you look there this fuel pump module type assembly we have the dreaded corrosion throughout it and on the lower side of the seat has been completely soaked which doesn't help so on the lower part of the seat all the way along maybe water at some stage got in to the back there is some type of rust type set up on it either way that seat has been soaked and there is some rust build up on the underside of it and now we have some extensive corrosion build up there now i haven't gone down any further yet i will be but that is very very likely um the root cause of this problem is found in this connector so i'm going to separate this now and have a closer look so this is extremely stuck, uh, doesn't want to disconnect at all. I might just soak it with some electrical cleaner and maybe some lubricant in on the side there. So just in the side connector, sometimes if you lubricate the edges and soak them you um, in contact cleaner, you can help free the block connector out for removal um, I'll try a little bit more and see if I can if not that is the next step for this okay so I have got this out it was pretty jammed I did spray some lubricant on the sides of the connector uh, either side because there was additional corrosion as you can see down there there will be contact cleaner as well additionally onto that but if you see there, extensive, extensive corrosion throughout all of the terminals. This was a problem 
just waiting to happen. It was only a matter of time before this was going to cause issue when you have that type of corrosion in the terminals coming through here. So yeah, that is definitely the root fault of this. And I might just see, now bear in mind I haven't even cleaned up that terminal but we have shook it about. What is the chances with just that, that this car might start now? No, we still don't have communication, which is absolutely fine, but we're gonna to have to clean up on this. We could have a module failure as well. But that is the start of the diagnostic on this. That is the quick and simple checks I've done. Take this block connector out again, clean up all those pins. I will recheck it to see if, um, if that clears it but regardless I'm going to be getting into the fuel pump we're not going to be just leaving it there this would have been under strain for a very long period of time as well so we want to be making sure that we're doing everything that we can to have this vehicle as safe on the road as possible and make sure this fault doesn't come back now the next clips I'm showing are actually a couple of days later but what I'm doing is showing you the testing process that I led to the confirmation of diagnostic result. This is me checking the power and checking the ground with the electrical connector disconnected. That is connected before the actual fuel pump module and with the fuel pump module plugged back in and then plugged back into the uh, fuel pump assembly, I back probe on the power and ground wire on either on either side of this socket and what i want to see here is when i flick the key i would be looking for a uh, a pulsing essentially on the power probe flashing on and off as it was switching we have a ground up both but it is power coming in and then it's dead from here downwards so we we knew this was the fault one was ordered in which i have in my hand here i have it hooked up and i'm just going to show you what a correct reading uh, is when you flick the key and as you could see there, the lights are flickering back and over and you're getting a reading on the uh, power probe as well. And on that side, you're seeing the earth flash. But if you look here, flicking back and over, voltage is going up too. And that is a working control module. Now this is the fuel pump removed. That is a pipe going from the inlet to the outlet and it's just directly hooked up to uh, battery voltage, which is giving me the reading. Uh, the reason I did that is I wanted to see if the uh, fuel pump was working. I also wanted to check the in-tank uh, level of the fuel and also if there's any dirt in the fuel as well. Now, after all that, you can make a decision whether you change the fuel pump assembly whether you put it all back together or not that's a discussion for you and the customer or based on um, the condition of the pump you can make a viable decision that's right last thing is the road test which you're seeing here i'm just confirming after everything is back together that i'm happy with how the vehicle is traveling i'm monitoring the live data as i'm driving and I'm also making sure that no fault codes are returning. Uh, just to touch back on the cleaning, the electrical cleaning was completely clear of that blue corrosive stuff on the connector afterwards, and we had a very good result. And I'm now on the way back to the workshop. I'm nearly finished this test drive. Everything is good, no issues, engine lights off, no codes have returned, the fuel gauge is reading correctly, and this one is ready to go back to the customer. 
So by following that procedure, we were able to find and fix this fault. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.